This is our picks against the spread. We're going to do our ACC games. We're not going to do top five games. We're going to do top three games. As I said, I like to nerf Houston now that he's got his his little run going. Not only that, Houston, you are going to go first, my friend, and really, <laughs> really put the pressure on okay. because you cannot beat you cannot beat the show host. You can. Allen did last year and destroyed me, but he didn't. Just, <laughs> he didn't destroy me. I was like sixty eight percent. He was seventy three percent. I don't know seventy two percent. I don't know. I don't know. But he did really well. Um, but, so we'll start off, ACC action, early, earlier game, well this is a, I don't know why I put this one first, why would I put this one first, I don't know, anyways, number two, okay. Notre Dame, Fighting Irish, 8-0, 7-0 at conference, ugh, and we know why they're 8-0, 3-30 game, this is a Friday, that's why I put it first, this is a Friday game, Number 25, North Carolina Tar Heels, 6-2 overall. Two teams that can definitely score. Notre Dame, 462 yards per game. North Carolina, 563 yards per game. The problem, though, is North Carolina also allows a ton of yards from their opposing teams. Their last two games, they beat Wake Forest, 59-53. They beat Duke, 56-24. Before that, they lost, traveling to Virginia, 44-41. Notre Dame, you know that. They haven't lost a game at all. They kind of struggled a little bit against Boston College and then had a barn burner against Clemson in a double overtime winner. Thriller there. Um, ESPN FPI, 73% Notre Dame winner. Right now, the spread showing minus four and a half. Head scratcher there for me. I don't really know why it's minus four and a half. I'm guessing it's because Notre Dame has such a expensive explosive offense but if you know i mean not notre dame but uh north carolina north carolina has an explosive offense you know if you watch north carolina at all this year you know that all they need is one pass to make a touchdown i mean howell to daz newsom or to um dayami brown those two guys can really light it up and can score really at any given moment at any part of the field so um to me Plus four and a half would mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I may be wrong because I'm terrible at math. I'll start with Alan. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, correct <laughs> me if I'm wrong, gentlemen. Four and a half would mean that they that they would, if, if I pick them, they, they would basically have kept it closer than Clemson did because Clemson <laughs> lost by seven. So really that makes seven, me yeah. that makes me a little nervous there picking them so i'm not going to do it i can't believe that they would ha- keep it closer to notre dame than clemson did so so give me give me notre dame to cover the spread minus four and a half so that's not a bad thing if north carolina keeps it closer than clemson here's the reason why our offense did not have a trevor lawrence b frank ladson we had joe and gata for like one play uh, and look at the offensive output that DJ Wengalale was able to do with Amari Rogers and Cornell Powell. That was literally the offense, and he threw for 439 yards on that defense. If you have the offense that North Carolina has with Bo Corrales, Deami Brown, Daz Newsom, Devontae Williams, uh, and Michael Carter, along with Sam Howell, I think this game is closer than a lot of people, and it's going to look similar to last year's game uh, with Clemson and North Carolina. North Carolina is going to be in this game. It's going to be higher scoring. It's going to be one of these games where Notre Dame is going to have to hang on. I'm not ready to say there's going to be an upset, but I think it's going to be uh, under that four and a half. I think it's going to be really, really close, and Notre Dame is going to be sweating it out at the end. This would mean Notre Dame, this will be their closest game possible because, or the closest game this season they have not lost a game by less than five their their closest game was that five game winner against louisville so they haven't they haven't had an opponent get closer than five <clears throat> yeah look i i think unc has a good offense i've ridden unc all year and they've done pretty well for me for the most part covering the spreads um notre dame is is a really good team you know we saw that their lines of scrimmage are are you know much better than most of what they face uh unc's defense is atrocious i think notre dame should be able to score on them but look you know a game at home a supercharged kind of game they're going to be they're going to be wanting to knock off the number two team in the country you know that's kind of how it works or number three number four whatever the heck notre dame is ranked now um and that's just the way it works you know they're going to be they're going to come out firing i think it's going to be uh a game that comes down to the end but 
I think it comes down to the fact that Notre Dame understands what's at stake. If they lose to North Carolina, and let's say they get into the ACC championship, a one-loss team against a one-loss Clemson, whom they beat earlier, and I think they know Clemson is going to take their revenge and get the better of them the next game, they are out of the playoffs. All right, two losses, puts them out of the playoffs. They understand what's at stake. They take care of business uh, and win by a touchdown plus against UNC. I'm taking Notre Dame. Allen, let's not start this this week. Let's not start this this week. And what I mean by that is us picking the all the games the same way. Even though we did have a winning record, you know, and Houston really That's like true. got away with a, a, a basically cheating. But anyways, go ahead, Houston. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, keep letting me be lone wolf here. I'll be lone wolf. Just keep let it happen. Um, but me and you just picked opposite on in Clemson, so we're we're one and one. All yeah, right. so I'm lone Come wolf on. the last game. So next one up, let me exit out this one here. Uh, next one up, North Carolina State, 6-3, and 5-3 and three overall in conference. A 12 p.m. game on Saturday against Syracuse, probably the worst team in America, probably the worst team in the entire world, in the entire universe, at 1-8 and eight overall Syracuse. And um, haven't won a game since well before their, their Liberty Day of – uh, October 17th, they've lost five, the last five games to Liberty, Clemson, Wake Forest, Boston College, Louisville, and North Carolina State just barely squeaked by Liberty, beat Florida State, and lost to Miami and UNC, but then beat Duke. So North Carolina State is a team that I believe is is a decent team overall. Their, their, their defense can't keep them with the better teams out there, and they end up losing those. But I was kind of surprised that they actually ended up pulling out a win against uh, Liberty, even though, like I said, it was at the very end uh, that they barely kind of made it through. But for me, Syracuse is literally the worst. Minus 14.5 for NC State. I believe the public right now is picking 98% to – North Carolina State. So go ahead and let me let me get on some of that and give me North Carolina State. Yeah, Syracuse is terrible and dead to me. I'm with you as well. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say I would rather trade Syracuse out and have Liberty in the ACC. <laughs> uh, so go ahead, Syracuse stinks. Uh, give me NC State. Sorry about Next. that. I cut you off there, Houston. I forgot you are supposed to be ahead of me. You're actually supposed to be ahead of Morgan. So Morgan cut you off too. But you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I no one, no one's ahead of me. Come on, let, let's take that. Let's 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 not get crazy, okay? No, nobody is ahead of me on this show, right? All right. So come on, um, Louisville at Boston College. This one's interesting too. This weekend, I got Caesar's Caesar's Palace says even. But Odd Shark has plus one to Louisville. So let's take the plus one, minus one to Boston College. So let's make it interesting. Let's not make it a straight-up pick. Let's make it interesting, give the plus one, minus one. So Boston College right now is the slight favorite at minus one, 52.5% ESPN FPI. I watched the Louisville-Syracuse game, and even though, yes, Louisville racked up 30 to nothing, it was against a Syracuse team. That really is just bad. Really, really bad. The two teams that they played before that that were good, they lost to. Virginia and Virginia Tech. Florida State, not a good team either. They won against them. Notre Dame, good team. They lost to them. So Louisville, again, struggles against some of the better teams, seems to do really well against the bad teams, and they have the turnover bug. Louisville was turning the ball over. Malik Cunningham was throwing interceptions left and right. I mean, they both had interceptions. Get this. I didn't say this for Louis, for, for Syracuse. Syracuse had like seven first downs compared to 20-something from Louisville. Okay? I mean, it was like ridiculously lopsided in that game. And, again, against such a team that's that bad, they still had three turnovers. Louisville cannot stop turning the ball over. I consider them to continue to turn the ball over. And considering it's at Boston College, where there will be maybe no fans and a bunch of cardboard boxes, I would say, go ahead and give give me Boston College. I'd rather take them with um, with the win there. Because, um, like I said, it's basically straight up, but I think they'll win by more than one point. So give me Boston College. Yeah, this this line is, is fishy. Uh, oh, let me College, write that down. Fishy. Yeah, it's a fishy line. I don't understand how it's this close. Boston College is a better team than Louisville. Phil Jerkovic is probably, to me, uh, he's in the top tier of quarterbacks in the ACC this year behind Trevor Lawrence, Sam Howell, and Ian Book. It's Phil Jerkovic right after that. Um, he's very good. And he could he could 
play himself into being a potential draft pick, not this year, but next year's draft. He's that good to me. I think that they have a very sound defense. Um, I think that Boston College has uh, just a different, I, I guess you could say, momentum for their team right now, the way they're trending. Louisville is kind of still trying to figure their way out right now. I, I think Boston College is going to win this big. Give me Boston College. <clears throat> yeah, I 100% agree with Houston. I think there's something kind of weird about this line. I think BC should be favored by much more. Louisville's getting credit for a, a 30 to nothing victory over a garbage team, and even a, a t- you know a game that they didn't even look very good, even though they won 30 to nothing. Uh, you know, it, Syracuse was down to their third string quarterback or whatever, which I wish I would have known before I picked that game. But moving on, um, <laughs> it, I think yeah, BC wins this one pretty big as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely give me the Eagles minus the points. Boyd, Boyd. Boyd. Void. We didn't lose that game. Void. Um, yeah, void it out. <laughs> next up, Duke at Georgia Tech. The battle of the two win teams. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. game. This These two teams have played almost 20 games, and it's a 7 p.m. game, and there's four wins between the both of them. Okay? All right. So that's how ridiculous this is. But I, I didn't say I agree with Casey in the chat. I don't necessarily mind 3.30 games. Not too early, not too late. You know, good time. But give me uh, give me Duke. I mean, I'm just going to pick. I feel like they're the better team. This is even on, in Caesars Palace, even at oddshark.com. So we're going to call this a straight-up pick. This is our only one we've ever had all year as a straight-up pick against the spread. It's even right now. So uh, basically, what you got, Houston? This is going to be an ugly game. Uh, might be the most boring game uh, in <laughs> this year. Both these teams are terrible. They're trash city. Uh, give me Duke to win this one three to two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. I see my opportunity, and I'm going to pounce on it. Oh, all boy. Right, so, yeah, Duke is garbage. <laughs> They've killed me all year. Doesn't matter what I pick. Duke always loses the game for me, whether I pick them or not. <laughs> uh, tried to ride the Chase Bryce train early, then decided that they were utter utter garbage and i went against them and they still decided to win so i'm going to take georgia tech here i think they've got a what do you say a seven o'clock a night game they're going to be fired up the yellow jackets are going to be swarming everywhere and uh, i'm going to give gt uh, a chance to win this one and gain me a game on the group here is is that literally have you waited all year to say <laughs> to say believe it or not the that yellow one was jacket. just off the cuff <laughs> all all the all in all in on georgia tech all in <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm putting you down lone wolf there. 22 interceptions between combined for both of these quarterbacks. How, okay, all right, here's the question. What happens? More touchdown passes or interceptions? Interceptions, hand down. (laughs) (laughs) That's very possible. (laughs) Next up, uh, two teams or one team that we really don't want to talk about much anymore. Virginia travels to Florida State. We'll see if Florida State wants to play this week. Four and four overall, two and six overall for Florida State. Florida State stinks. As Houston likes to say, I'm going to steal that from you. Virginia, minus nine and a half. I can't pick anybody other than Virginia in this situation just because I'm that mad. Well, you know, Florida State had a decommit on Sunday. You have a few more the a uh, few more of those this week that may not play the game. Uh, I'm going to have to pick Virginia, assuming the game is played. Um, I mean, I, I honestly think Florida State is about to fold. Like, if you're not willing to play Clemson and the line's that big for Virginia, why play against Virginia either? <laughs> UVA minus 30. Give me, Give me the Wahoos. All right. All right. I, I think that's all of our ACC games. And Alan got a chance to pick our top three games of the week. And so this is our top three games of the week that are not the ACC. If you missed our ACC games, go check out our other clip on the ACC-specific games and Clemson as well. Uh, But thanks so much for the support. Top three games of the week, starting with number 15, Iowa State, 6-2 and two overall, traveling to Austin. 12 p.m. game against number 20, Texas Longhorns, 5-2 and two overall. FPI right now, 71.9% chance for Texas to win. However, this doesn't call into the fact that Iowa State is 6-1 and one overall in the conference. They are a top 
of the Big 12 right now in the conference. Brock Purdy struggled a little bit, six interceptions on the year, but uh, Brees Hall has been doing really well and getting even better. Over 1,000 yards rushing, over 1,100 yards rushing, and 15 total touchdowns right now on the ground. Really, really great job. Maybe one of the best running performances we've had all year from Mr. Hall. So good job there. Um, This one, though, Sam Ellinger. Man, if anybody can keep you close and keep you in a game, Sam Ellinger can do it. And this is at home, like I said. But, again, Iowa State's coming off a three-game win streak. Texas also a three-game win streak. Texas won uh, at home versus West Virginia, away against Oklahoma State, and versus Baylor back at home. The wins for Iowa State, we've got uh, last game, K-State, they beat them 45 to nothing. Baylor, 38-31, and Kansas, at Kansas, 52-22. to For me, I'm going to go ahead and say that I take Iowa State in this one because there's so much going on. There's so much at stake with this 6-1 and one overall in the conference. I know Texas is one of those teams that can stick around until, you know, quadruple overtime. I get it. I, I think that Texas, according to the FPI, says they're going to just win the game outright. But it's minus two on the spread. I don't know. I'm looking at Odd Shark, and when I look at the... When I look at the prediction here, it's 50-50 public consensus here. Iowa State, the computer says Iowa State's going to win by three, or excuse me, by four. So give me Iowa State plus, plus. Uh, well, we've got plus two at Caesars, plus one and a half at Odd Shark. Give me plus one and a half, uh, Iowa State. I'll take plus one and a half. Uh, give me Iowa State on this one as well. Um there's a big difference between one category. If you look at both their offenses, uh, you think you look at their average output a year between Texas and Iowa State is, is uh, I think, a half yard difference. They both average like 470 something yards a game, something absurd like that. The difference is you look at the defense. Texas is giving up almost as many yards as they're they're putting up. Uh, <laughs> Iowa State is giving up about a hundred yards less. Uh, Iowa State has a very sound defense. I think that's going to be enough to get them by in this game. Brees Hall is going to run wild. Uh, Brock Purdy is going to have a pretty good game, too. Give me Iowa State. All right. I got to start gaining some points somewhere, right? I actually had Texas marked on this one. I think I'm going to stick with Texas. Sam Ellinger, look, has been has been outstanding, as as he has been for the last couple of years. He's uh, He always seems to come up in these big games. You know, Morgan and I picked him, I believe it was against Oklahoma, maybe, or something like that, and that crazy overtime or triple overtime or quadruple overtime, whatever game it was. Uh, I hate betting against him in these big games, especially at home. Uh, you know, he's just a gamer. Guy's got some major skills, a lot of heart, plays really hard, you know, kind of takes the team on his shoulders. And I'm going to take Texas minus one and a half to cover this. Uh, I think if we go back to the errors and corrections, I think that was Houston that went in with you. I believe that I did not pick Ellinger. I, 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 I almost want to say that I picked against him, but, you know, maybe not. I don't know. You guys are looking yeah. at me like I'm crazy. So maybe I think you know wrong. better than me. Um, <laughs> if, if anybody I'd like to be wrong to, it'd be to you two lovely gentlemen there. Um, of course. all right. So number 22, this is a good one. The iron bowl, 22 Auburn Tigers, five and two overall been getting a little bit better every week. Uh, Bo Nix has, but also have been playing garbage teams. Um, Saturday, three 30 PM Eastern time, Alabama Crimson Tide, number one overall seven and oh, probably one of the best teams in the nation. Uh, like I said, number one overall, it just looks like no one can really stop them right now. And I would have to say, as a Clemson fan, hard to argue that considering where Clemson is right now. Not saying at the end of the year or maybe with a month off to prepare, but hard to argue that Alabama is not the best team in the nation. Right now, plus 24 at Caesars, plus 24 and a half over at Odd Shark, I believe, if I double check. Let me see here. Um, yeah, so 24 and a half, that's what we'll go with, is uh, Alabama favored. Uh, Bo Nix, like I said, has been doing better and getting incrementally better every single game. And I think that the passing game has gotten, you know, has starting to kind of figure out, he's starting to kind of get, get it together, I guess. But I don't know, like I said, Louisiana State, LSU, not a very good defense. Tennessee, not a very good defense. Ole Miss, as we know, not a very good defense. So what can you really say? Other, than, I mean, then they lost to South Carolina, won against Arkansas. Alabama, on the other hand, just blew out Kentucky 
blanked Mississippi State and, you know, beat Tennessee better than Tennessee got beat by Auburn. So that's another teller there. But the question is, if Auburn starts the game with 24 and a half, with so much on the line being a rivalry game, what can happen? Well, here's the deal. I looked up last year, if you guys remember, so if you look up the schedule, I'm pull it up here real quick, 2019, um, this was a 48-45 loss at Auburn. Uh, Alabama lost that game, last, last uh, regular season game of the year, November 30th. And caused them to drop to a two loss Alabama or they, they became a two loss. They went ten and two that year in the regular season. Mac Jones was the quarterback at the time. Alabama would have won that game if Mac Jones hadn't have thrown two pick sixes in that game. I say this is a redemption game for Mr. Jones. I say with this offense the way it looks, regardless of how much better Auburn has been doing. I think Mac Jones looks great, and go ahead and give me Alabama to beat down their rival this year. So I'm taking Alabama. If this game was in Jordan Air, I would take Auburn. However, it's not. Uh, I think Auburn might be in it for a quarter, and then Alabama's going to run away with it. I'll say this. We haven't got to that point in the year where Alabama has like that late season game, like a Georgia or a Mississippi State, where you're like, well, this is three quarters in and this is closer. I don't think that's going to happen this week. Maybe down the road when they have a couple other games, maybe in the SEC championship game. It's bound to happen. It's happened every other year. We'll see if they can make it through that. Um, but I'm going to say they cover against the Auburn Tigers this week. Yeah, there's really no reason to believe that Auburn keeps us within 30. They're not a great team. Uh, you know, it's kind of some faux success they've had here lately. I don't believe in them. I don't trust them. If they were at Auburn and it was a full-capacity stadium, I might be tempted to take the 24-and-a-half. I'm not tempted right now. Give me Bama. Last game of the night, Oklahoma versus West Virginia. Travels to West Virginia, uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, Morgantown. ESPN FPI, 74% to Oklahoma. Oklahoma has been looking really good. They look good against OK State. They scored 62 against Kansas and Texas Tech. And um, as you know, if they keep fighting, they have a chance, and Iowa State lose, they have a chance to jump right back up there and make their bid for a Big 12 ch- uh, championship there or you know, be, be the winner of the Big 12. Um, but West Virginia has got a pretty decent defense, better defense than Oklahoma, even though I believe that Oklahoma's defense is getting better and has been getting better since, uh, that Texas game, uh, since the Texas game, the highest game was 28 points. The rest, nine points, 13 points, 14 points. So not even two scores. Uh, there only one game with more than two scores and that was Texas tech. The other three were under two scores. So, or two scores or less. So, um, you can tell that something's been clicking and Spencer Rattler now 2,319 yards, 22 touchdowns and six interceptions. So kind of settled into the offense there. I'm going to hold my pick until I hear what Houston has to say, because he's always got some great insights. <laughs> and, uh, as you know, I cannot, I'm only one game ahead of Houston. So I'm holding wow. my pick. <laughs> Okay, Mike, Mike Norvell. <laughs> hey, Mike Norvell. <laughs> Holding oh, my pick. Good. Oh. Okay. Oh, I gotta compose myself. Here. Um, I'm gonna go with West Virginia. Um, as far as not to win, but they, I feel I like can keep it under that 11. Um, I think West uh, Oklahoma will win this game by two scores, but I don't think it's going to get over 11 points. I think this is the kind of game that looks like a 37 to 27 type game. West Virginia's got a pretty salty bunch on defense. Neil Brown coaches defense really well. Um, West Virginia's offense isn't that bad. Um, I, I think that West Virginia's in this game. Oklahoma pulls away, but wins only by 10. And therefore, West Virginia is my pick this week. Hmm. So do hmm. I go next, or are you waiting for me too, Morgan? Alan, go ahead and go next. I want to know. <laughs> well, unfortunately uh, for you, Morgan, I don't have any brilliant insight. 
But I will tell you <laughs> that I'm taking West Virginia here as well. I, I agree with Houston for the most part. The you know for the life of me, I wanted to take Oklahoma. They've been playing some really good football uh, lately. They've been scoring a ton of points, and West Virginia hasn't scored as many points as we're used to seeing a West Virginia team score. So that kind of worries me a little bit. But uh, they they do have a, a defense that seems to rise up on occasion, especially in big games. And I think this is going to be one of those times where they keep it to about a ten point game. Okay, so looking at some stats I like to look at. Third down, opponent third down conversion, West Virginia 36%, sixth in the Big 12. Oklahoma, you would think with, you know, always we always rag on them about having a bad defense, right? Second in the Big 12 at 27%. 27% third down convert, conversion percentage is actually better than Clemson. So Clemson, I think, is like 35%. Not as good as Notre Dame. Notre Dame's like 25%. Um, hmm. So let's look. West Virginia basically, you know, looks like they're they're heavy. They're a little bit more heavy on the passing. Who has the better passing defense? Does Oklahoma have a good passing <clears throat> defense? Eh, about average. They're both about the same. Actually, West Virginia has the best passing defense in the Big 12. Hmm. hmm. Uh, Houston, just so you know, he's stalling and waiting on a text reply from hmm. Mr. Walt Detula right yeah. now. Yeah. Yes, Walt, please check your text messages. Please check your Twitter inbox currently. I'm going to have to contest this, um, okay? This should be contested. What? We're going to have to go to the Supreme Court for this one. Wow. All right. Wow. I'm waiting for my Dominion results to come in through Parlor. Um, you know what? The, the the climax is not going to ha- to happen because I'm going to pick West Virginia. I think that they have a good pass defense. Oklahoma is going to try to do what they can through the passing game. And, again, I cannot allow Houston to get a game on me. So I am yeah. gaming the system. Thanks, I am gaming Walt. the system here. Um, <laughs> give me West Virginia. I was leaning towards them anyways, gentlemen. I was leaning towards them anyways. 